Guys, the video you're about to watch was shot about a month and a half ago, and it is now making it on air. I shot that video with Joe, and it is an overview of the fragrances that are sold currently here in San Francisco at ZGO Perfumery from the brand Electimus London. But when we shot the video, we did not know that we were going to do a giveaway, and we are doing a giveaway. So fast forward till after the outro, of course, after you watch the entire video, to find out how you can participate to win a bottle of your choice of one of the fragrances discussed in the video if you are a subscriber of this channel from the USA. This is a giveaway sponsored by the distributor of Electimus London in the States. So good luck with the giveaway. Hey gang, back with another video for you today. We've got another house overview video with Joe here. I'm back, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're talking about Electimus London fragrances and we're focusing on the fragrances that are carried here in San Francisco's ZGO Perfumery. So we've got 10 fragrances. It's 10, right? Yeah. Yes. We've got 10 fragrances for you today. Find out all about Electimus London fragrances. Are you familiar with Electimus London? I am actually. I was gifted very kindly by Sebastian a little bag of samples not too long ago. And I was able to get familiar with a couple of the scents. These are definitely angled, at least a few of them are angled in a more Middle Eastern take of perfumery, which I have really taken a liking to, and I like a lot of the stuff they have. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the first fragrance. The first fragrance is the latest fragrance from the house. It's called Aquila Absolute, this one right here. And this is once again created by Julien Rasconet. We've got two of his fragrances here. I believe he's done three or four for the house. But before I, we talk about the brand, I mean the fragrance, uh, uh, just want to let you know all the fragrances are extra parfum concentration. And as I mentioned earlier, these fragrances are all carried at ZGO Perfumery. And I have a link to the fragrances in the info box. And there is a discount code there as well. So if you're interested in taking advantage of the discount code, you can. So what... Do you get with this one now that you smelled it? I certainly get, I mean, the name is Aquila, and I'm assuming that has some sort of translation towards aqua. I do get a bit of an aquatic ozonic vibe with this fragrance, but I also get a fruitiness, slight floral touches, but there's definitely that watery facet running through the scent, yeah. which I really like. This is definitely very ozonic. It's got a really big uh, dosage of violet leaves, which uh, he's picking up, and then mm -hmm. there's also the raspberry note in here but there's lots of herbal touches and you know what to get with this one like leather i don't know where i'm getting leather from but it's really? very leathery to interesting me. do you get that I'm maybe not... it's the white oud accord there's a white oud accord that's in here that's supposedly maybe giving us a leathery vibe but it could i'm be. getting leather from this yeah i'm also picking up on the turkish rose because there is definitely that rosy quality i wouldn't necessarily say again i know i've mentioned use the term uber like jammy rose but it's definitely rosy this is not jammy though it's not that jammy this is very dry it's yeah. a dry fragrance it's dry with aquatic touches if that makes sense <laughs> yeah definitely aquatic but it's very leathery to me i enjoy it though it's very dark and smoky kind of i almost feel like there's leather in here and there's also ambergris mm -hmm. like ambroxin slash ambergris kind of a combo i could smell that yeah which maybe it's the white eau de cord possibly it also does smell like a julian rasconet from other scents i've smelled from him in the past i do pick up on his work yes yeah. yeah, I, I could i could smell his dna in here okay to a certain extent all right yes. yeah he's a favorite perfumer of mine and Sadly, I didn't really care for Vici leather that he created from the house last year, but the two fragrances he's created this year are really, really great with uh, the, this, this, not this one being my favorite, the, the other one we'll get to in a little bit, but this mm -hmm. is Aquila Absolute. Let us know if you guys are familiar with this one. So the next fragrance we're talking about is Austere, this one right here. This one's created by John Stephen. Absolutely not familiar with this perfumer, but this features notes of Geranium, patchouli, star anise, cloves, ambergris, musk, sandalwood, lemons, and cedar. Mm -hmm. And once again, I'm getting leather again. <laughs> <laughs> but a different, a different kind of leather. This one's actually very romantic to me. Mm -hmm. In comparison to the previous fragrance, it's just very rough. Yes. What do you, guys, I'm, what do you I'm think? I'm actually picking up on quite a bit of the ambergris in this one. I definitely get some sort of a... I wouldn't necessarily say an oceanic vibe. I wouldn't necessarily say oh, it's, it's so good. It would. It doesn't smell like the ocean to me, but I really, really enjoy 
just how it smells. It's aromatic, it's fresh, and there's also some warmth in there. Yeah. So it's this nice concoction where you have a little bit of all the worlds put into one, and it's just a really, really nice creation that John Stephen has done. To me, this has uh, got that kind of very nice, soft sandalwood. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole entire combination, they don't mention leather, but there's more like a suede leather. It's very soft yeah. and very, very soft to the touch kind of a wear. Mm -hmm. And I'm comparing it to the last fragrance again, where it's really, really rough compared to this one. There's something very elegant and very inviting about this one, kind of also very, very cozy. You might be getting the leather from maybe a mixture of the the star anise and the cloves and the patchouli together, and then the sandalwood kind of making it smoother, possibly. Perhaps, it yeah. It could be something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It but could I, be creating like an accord. <laughs> it could be creating an accord for sure, but it's a really great one. Yeah. And I like the fact that they've used the cloves in here. It gives it a warmth, mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of warm notes mentioned in this uh, fragrance. Most of it is very, very fresh. But Austere is really, really great. I really like that one. Lovely scent. All right, next up, we're going to the fragrance called Black Caviar, this one right here. But I do want to be honest. When I first sampled the fragrances from this house and I sampled Black Caviar, I didn't really care for it. I've gotten used to it now. I think it was because it was just a little overly fishy for me. But uh, now it's just basically a marine fragrance. Mm -hmm. Obviously, caviar comes from the sea, but it has notes of rosemary, caviar, oak moss, lavender, sage, agar, wood, a vetiver, patchouli, cedar. And this is created by Marco Genovese. He's done a couple of fragrances from this house, I believe. There's something very salty and familiar about this fragrance. I don't know what it is about it, but I think the execution is really, really great. And out of the... I just think that this whole collection that we're talking about today from Electimus is really nicely curated for ZGO Perfumery. Yeah. I just think they've got some of the best ones. And even though I didn't really care for Black Caviar before, I've gotten really used to it and also enjoying it. It is very, very marine. It does smell like the sea. It smells like the sea, yes. But it's quite nice because the lavender and rosemary kind of adds this lightness to it where it's kind of it adds a bit of an ar aromatic touch to it that, yeah that definitely takes it in a different direction from just being your typical marine fragrance totally which is quite nice and it adds, it's got depth to it because i just smelt the opening right there in a long time and then i had the dry down when i first came in and it it seems to change quite a bit from the opening to the dry down Totally. Yeah. There's once again something smoky in here as well. And I also feel like there's ambergris in this fragrance, even though there's no mention of it. Mm -hmm. So the caviar might have some similarities to the the uh, the smell of uh, ambergris. Yeah. But I like that they've mixed it with the uh, three different kinds of aromatic herbal notes, the rosemary, lavender, and sage. Mm -hmm. And it tones down the fishiness, even though, as I said, it was very fishy to me mm -hmm. when I first smelled it. It's nice now. Yeah, no, it's it's a pleasant pleasant marine scent with uh, lots of different layers. Yeah, and it's yeah. also very beastly. A lot of these fragrances are really intense because their concentration is extrait de parfum. So very, very long lasting fragrances. Very strong fragrances. Yeah. Okay, we're going back to another Julien Rasconet creation. This is Gladiator Oud, this one right here. This is probably one of the best in this collection here. I really, really enjoy it. And it's definitely the signature of Julien Rasconet. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about this? This one reminds me to a certain extent of a less fruity take on the moon from Frederick Mall. Um, it's, it seems like a very similar oud and just in, in its whole concoction, it's just the whole idea of it seems very reminiscent of the moon, in my opinion. And like you said, it does have his DNA all over it. I agree with that fully. Yeah. It's a great scent. Definitely a really great scent. The moon is one of my favorites from Frederick Mall. In fact, it's my favorite desert gems fragrance. Mm -hmm. It's beat out the night and promise. Really love it. This does remind me of it, but once again, I think he's done something different, which fits more of the Electromus London collection. Yeah. And everything seems very connected and like they're using a similar DNA. So I feel like when you smell all these fragrances, you'll experience this roughness. Mm -hmm. There's something very rough about it. I mean, even though Austere was a lot more soft and elegant, there's still the same DNA in it. And here, it's kind of basically the moon for Electimus London, but it's yeah. really, really great. Oh, it's lovely. And the note breakdown's interesting. It has Immortel, it has Hay, Absolute, Geranium. It's just, it has a lot of different things going on. I also pick up quite a bit of leather in this 
I get some sort of a leather cord. Yeah, it's the saffron, um, basically. It's got to be from the saffron, right? And yeah. then, uh, yeah, it's it's a really, really lovely scent. It says it has cumin, um, yeah. which I don't necessarily pick up on too much of a sweaty. It's on me. It's It's definitely comes through on me. Is it cumin-y on you? It does get cumin-y. Okay. And I like that about it because the moon does not get cumin-y. This one does. Okay. And I love cumin. Are you a fan? Oh, I love cumin. Yeah. yeah. Cumin's great. Yeah. yeah, it's very sweaty, but this one doesn't get too sweaty. Yeah, but still, still. Also, one more thing before we move on to the next fragrance. A lot of these fragrances seem very dry. Mm -hmm. I think we were talking about that with the last brand too. They're dry fragrances. Yeah, that was with Do the you agree? Uh, Sus Suspiro. Yeah, yeah. Where, where it had like the the wood shaving aspect to all their all their scents. Yeah, I do agree. These ones don't necessarily have a wet tonality. Yeah. I guess you could say they're definitely on the drier side, but. The way they're executed, it I don't think it could have been executed any better. Yeah. Yeah. Up next we've got a fragrance from a perfumer by the name of Sophia Bardelli, who I'm not too familiar with and except for the house of Electimus London. And this is Imperium, this one right here. I think this one out of the entire collection is probably the most feminine out of the whole group. I would, I, I would agree with that, yeah. But it's a gorgeous fragrance. Really, really beautiful, very fresh, very floral. The juiciness, this, actually this one is not as dry because mm -mm. when you smell it, you're getting a very juicy, citrusy yeah. feel in there. It settles to a more deeper fragrance, like the patchouli oud comes through, an mm -hmm. amber in the guyac wood, but then you've got lots of fresh and citrusy and floral notes. Up. I agree. This one is another one that when I first sprayed it on, I was expecting it to be almost linear. I thought it was going to just be bergamot, freshness, citrusy, juiciness with some florals. And then as it started drying down, the saffron, the oud, all that darkness started rising out of it. And it didn't take over, but it definitely, it added to the original opening of it. And it's, it ended up very nice. It's definitely a more approachable scent and a more palatable scent from yeah. this house, in my opinion. Um, because like I said, some of them are Middle Eastern and they definitely are not going to be palatable to everybody's noses. <laughs> you would have to be a bit more of a connoisseur, I guess you could say, of fragrances. But this one is definitely a bit more approachable. Definitely, yeah. yeah. He's correct. It's definitely more approachable and also the more feminine leaning out of what yeah. we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. But it's gorgeous. I think it's perfect for summer. It's very fresh. And even though we said it's pretty dry, and even though this is pretty dry, I think that citrus adds a bit of uh, wet uh, juiciness, kind of juiciness yeah. to, the, to the mix. I agree. So next we're going to a fragrance called Mercurial Cashmere, this one right here. And this is also created by Sofia Bardelli. It features notes of cashmere wood, caramel, tuberose, vanilla, iris, tonka, gray amber or ambergris, musk, oud, violet, cardamom, bergamot, pink pepper, cedar wood. There's so much going on in this. There is a what lot. What do you think about this? I The moment I smelt this one for the first time, I got white florals. I got the tuberose. And it's a very nice tuberose. For me, tuberose can sometimes go in a bit of a green direction, not necessarily maybe a vegetal direction. Um, this one is definitely more on the creamy side for me. It's going to be more of that voluptuous white flower that you kind of depict tuberose to be. Um, I think it's lovely. It's powdery a bit from some of the iris in there. And I also pick up on a lot of the caramel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, it's so distinct with the violet. It's so amazing. And that violet kind of creates a bit of a makeup effect. Mm -hmm. But when I first smell this fragrance, it reminds me of fresh laundered linens. I don't know where I get that from. It's very clean, yeah. but there's a creaminess about it. This is definitely not the dry one, like we were just no. saying. We said that there was a lot of dry there, but this one's definitely very creamy, smooth, mm -hmm. and also a bit on the feminine side once again. I would definitely say this is more feminine leaning. Yeah. Yes. But it's gorgeous, actually. I would wear this. As would I. Hey, <laughs> we, we've said it before on here. We have no say in what you wear. Like... Wear what you want wear, when you want. Wear what you want when you want, exactly. Can't say it better than that. It's a lovely fragrance. No, yeah, this collection, as I was saying earlier, this is curated series of fragrances over at ZGO is, I think, perfect. So those of you that are nearby and haven't sampled the fragrances of Electimus London, definitely go check them out. Mm -hmm. 
in store smell them and tell them sebastian the perfume guy sent you Yes, and so. Joe. <laughs> and me. Hi. <laughs> so there are two patchouli fragrances from the House of Electimus London, and both of them are carried over at ZGO Perfumery. We're going with the first one. It's Patchouli of the Underworld. To me, it reminds me of the name of a sci-fi film. <laughs> but uh, this stuff is uh, very, very complex. Created by Kevin Mathis, mm -hmm. who I'm, I'm not familiar with as a perfumer. But it's patchouli, but very, very complex and leathery and ambery. It features patchouli, leather, carnation, castorium, labdanum, styrax, cystus, black pepper, pink pepper, mandarin. So it's got animalic qualities as well yeah. as it's drying down. But when you first spray it, it's patchouli, but very, very deep and dense. Mm -hmm. And smoky. We've got smoky touches, and I think the castorium adds that smoky leathery cre you know, cre usually castorium was used to create a leather mm -hmm. the smell of leather and you can definitely pick it up in there i really pick up the castorium i think the leather accord that they're using might even contain some form of castorium as well mm -hmm. um and the added castorium really just boosts that up but it definitely does give off a smoky tonality and there is animalic touches to this like there's a lot of animalic analysis castorium styrax cystus like a lot of stuff is going to attribute to an animalic sense in this fragrance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not overwhelmingly animalic. No, it's not. Not by any means. No, but it's it's very very deep. But you know, sometimes some people that are not experienced with animalic will say that stuff smells like an animal. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're experienced with uh, you know fragrances, you you really might enjoy that, especially if you like something really deep, dark, dense. You know, earthy, patchouli, woody, and then also the animalic ambery touches with the labanum, the styrax, and um, cystus, of course, but the castorium too. Yeah. So it's really, really great. It's very complex compared to the, the next patchouli. Mm -hmm. So the next fragrance, Persephone's Patchouli, similar green bottle created by Christian Provenzano, one of my favorite perfumers. This is the only Christian Provenzano fragrance we have in this collection of Electimus London fragrances. And to me, this is a very green patchouli. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the color of the bottle. What are yeah. your thoughts? I actually like this patchouli a little bit more. Me too. And this one is gonna go in a more green direction, like Sebastian said. There's something about it that I'm actually just, I don't know what it is, and maybe the plum and the pomegranate together, along with the honey, adding like a bit of sweetness. Yeah, I like that sweetness. It's it's quite nice. It, it makes it a little, I'm gonna use the word approachable again, but it definitely makes it a little bit more palatable for an everyday nose who doesn't know fragrance that well. And at the same time, it doesn't smell designer. It's a niche fragrance that is very approachable and it's a patchouli yeah, yeah yeah what i really well actually i did a video on electimus london fragrances i did like five i ranked that at number one because i just really love the way it smells it's patchouli one of my favorite notes my number one favorite note i like it because it doesn't smell like things like psychedelic or reminiscence patchouli it's different in that it's got a green vibe but mm. it's got the sweetness from the honey which i really really like some juiciness from the plum and then of course woods and mm -hmm. ambergris for a little bit of uh you know funk in there yeah. but this is not as animalic as the previous patchouli very wearable mm -hmm. really really intense and i love it yeah it's a great fragrance yeah yeah so we've got another fragrance from marco genovese and this is trajan or trahan trajan Trajan. Trojan. Trojan, Trajan, <laughs> Trahan, whatever you want to call it. So this one to me is one of the most recognizable out of the entire collection. You'll be reminded of Baccarat Rouge when you smell this one, totally. but it's a citrusy take on Baccarat Rouge. So it's saffron, blood orange, amber gris, mandarin orange, lavender, sage, oak moss, cedar, lemons, bergamot. Lots of citruses. It's juicy, but it's got that kind of ambroxan. Mm -hmm. They're calling it amber gris, but I think it's ambroxan. I'm not getting that marine quality that ambergris gives. I'm getting definitely more of that molecular quality yeah. that ambroxan has. Totally, yeah. I feel like ambergris, is, I'm sorry, ambroxan is supposed to replace am, ambergris, mm -hmm. but to me, they smell nothing alike. I agree with that. Totally different. I, I don't I don't get the correlation between those two. Notes. I don't know. I don't I don't get it. In fact, we just discussed it in a video with Sarah Baker I've shot recently. We did a video on ambergris fragrances. What what's the deal with ambergris versus ambroxan because they smell nothing alike. Mm -hmm. I love ambergris and in, in little doses and yeah. I love ambroxan in big doses. Yeah. 
So this is all Embroxen to me. It's a, it's an Embroxen bomb, but there is, like Sebastian was mentioning, there is that citrus aspect that is going to separate it from something like Baccarat Rouge. Um, the blood orange, along with the mandarin orange, is gonna. it's definitely a bit juicier, again. So I know we were saying that a lot of these fragrances are dry, and some of them are, but this one is going to be a little bit more on the juicy side. And then along with the lemons and bergamot, there's definitely... A noticeable citrus side true, to it. True, true, yeah. This is definitely juicier, but I feel like Imperium is even ju further juicier. Mm -hmm. For me, when they add the uh, saffron and uh, the ambergris or ambroxan next to citruses, it kind of tones down their juiciness. This, to me, feels a little more drier, but still yeah. definitely more juicy than most of the dry fragrances in this series of fragrances. If you enjoy Baccarat Rouge, you will enjoy this. Yeah, well, definitely. Let's just say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last but not least, we've got another fragrance created by Sofia Bardelli. This is Vixer, this one right here. Uh, I guess she's uh, doing some great work over at the uh, House of uh, Electromus London. I don't know who the perfumer is personally, so I think we like her work, right? Oh, yeah, we definitely do like her work, indeed. So this one, what do you think of this? I do get a, a creamy side to it. Um, I'm assuming with some of the white flowers, the iris, the ylang ylang and the tonka beans added together i'm sh i'm sure that's and also the jasmine and gardenia and the sandalwood there's a lots of creamy notes in this fragrance and it does translate over to be a creamy experience this one to me is uber powdery and mm -hmm. i think it's because of the musk plus the heliotrope okay definitely creates kind of a light almondy effect here mm -hmm. but this is pretty it is pretty it's, this is also kind of on the feminine side so i think Seven of the fragrances lean masculine. Three of the fragrances definitely lean on the feminine side. But once again, very unisex offerings. It depends on how kind of what kind of fragrances you like. But I love that. I, I love could I could see that being a really good daytime scent. But I could also see it translating over very well into the nighttime. Totally. It's a it's definitely an all day kind of scent where you don't need to change fragrances before you go out at night. You could just keep wearing that one throughout the day. Yeah. yeah. And the other cool thing is these do last a long time. You can probably put it on and don't have to replenish mm -hmm. again in the uh, at the end of the day. But me, I like to replenish every hour. As do I. <laughs> we we like our we like to smell strong. We like our sillage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those are our thoughts on this collection of Electumless London fragrances. What do you think? I love them. I, I preface this video by saying that I really enjoyed the direction that they go in and I I stand by that. I'm a big fan of all their fragrances and some more than others, but you get that with any house, right? Yeah. 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 So as we do with other videos, we're ranking the fragrances, but we're doing six of them. We're not doing all 10 and I'm going to start off with Imperium at number six. And I feel like Imperium is a really gorgeous white floral combo with the vanillic you know, kind of notes. And that's why I think it deserves to be at number six. What are your thoughts about the Imperium? Again, I thought Imperium was a very nice white floral. It did not make my top six, but it is, we were talking about it and it does, it does have a recognizable scent. And yeah. It kind of, uh, there's a recognizability about that. Perhaps it might kind of, uh, remind you of some other fragrances mm -hmm. out there, but I think it's done in its own unique way, which I really, really enjoy. So yeah, I, I can, agree. I like the fact that it's got warmer notes in the dry down, but it's very fresh up top. And that's mm -hmm. what really kind of draw, draws me in. So I've left, I've put that at number six. And my number six is Aquila. And Aquila Absolute. Aquila Absolute. Yeah. There we go. And this one for me, the violet leaves, that ozonic touch to it. It was a very nice scent for me. It also had that needed sweetness and some of the aromatics as well, and I thought it was I thought it was a very nice take from this house. I would have put Aquila Absolute at number seven, uh, very smoky, kind of leathery against the ozonic touches of the violet leaves. Yeah. But it just didn't make my number in my top six, unfortunately. It's okay. But my number five is Mercurial Cashmere, and again, I didn't mention this when we were shooting the the talking about this fragrance well this is another fragrance when i first smelled the samples and those are the samples i gave you because yeah. i had received the samples mm -hmm. to go through i didn't really care for it but it's grown on me just like black caviar although black caviar didn't make the top six but i really enjoy mercurial cashmere for what it is now it's very soft and mm -hmm. elegant to wear yeah it definitely does have that cashmere and vibe to it and yeah. it's uh it's noticeable in the fragrance. So if you are a fan of that note in perfumery, then you will more than likely enjoy this yeah, one. Yeah, if you like cashmere or cashmere. Mm -hmm. 
Cashmere wood. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. My number five was Vixair. Vixair, again, it's a little bit more feminine leaning. Um, wear what you want when you want. <laughs> it's the powdery <laughs> heliotrope. <laughs> but um, like Sebastian mentioned, there is that nutty almondy quality from the heliotrope uh, mixing with some of the musks. But I thought it was a, a very beautiful powdery yet creamy white floral that could be worn all day and all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's my number four, mm-hmm. Vixair. Really enjoy the nuttiness. The heliotrope is a note that I did not really care for before. But I've really, really grown to love heliotrope. I enjoy powdery fragrances. It's the anti-iris because it's powdery just like iris, but it doesn't smell vegetal. It smells more gourmand, almost like you know almonds, as I'm saying. Yeah. But I like the fact that it's nicely blended with the flowers and everything. So really enjoyed that creation Mm -hmm. from uh, Sofia Bardelli. Yeah. My number four was black caviar. And although it is extremely marine, it is definitely, it does have some fishy touches to it. Um, I found it to be a very artistic creation. Mm. And in, in one of, I think it was the first one we were, when we were reviewing Suspiro, we were talking about how making music and creating perfume. I, I really look for the composition and the creativity behind it. And I thought that that was a very beautiful take on a marine scent and an ambergris scent at that. And uh, yeah, I was, I was a big fan of Black Caviar, the saltiness and just the oceanic qualities of it. I thoroughly enjoyed. Cool. Yeah. Black Caviar would have ended up at number nine for me. <laughs> a little, but, d- a little uh, further than me. <laughs> it might have even been at number 10, but uh, uh, I, I didn't like it before. I, I, I like it now. Yeah. I really do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so my number three is Gladiator Oud. And uh, I like the fact that this reminds me of the moon, but it's different. I like the addition of um, the roughness and the DNA of uh, Electimus London. And I really like the addition of the cumin in this and just just really love the intensity and uh, fruitiness contrasted with the oud. Mm -hmm. It's dry. I kind of tend to prefer more, you know, creamy, wetter kind of fragrances, ambery or fragrances, but really, really love this creation by julian rascone um it's a nice one really. it's a beautiful fragrance i have that one at number two little spoiler for you folks okay <laughs> um, my number three however was persephone's patchouli um great patchouli in my opinion like i said before a little bit better or at least for my liking than patchouli of the underworld um it doesn't go in a leathery direction however it goes in a greener more not vegetal but it's it's in a greener direction and i thoroughly enjoy that I think with patchouli, sometimes it could get chocolate cakey mm-hmm. and almost gourmand to a certain extent, totally depending on how gourmand. depending on how the perfumer works with the patchouli. This one does not do that, and I have recently been smelling quite a few chocolatey patchoulis, and I think my nose picked up on how this one was different, and it totally different. took it took a liking to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at number two, it's austere, austere. Oh my God. I mm. can't believe how good it is. It's amazing. I'm shocked at how good it is. That's going to be an everyday wear for me. Fair I smell. like this. <laughs> I like the leatheriness. or It's more like suede leather. Yeah. There's a soft creaminess about it that's just really, really delicious. Very elegant. Mm-hmm. And I think of dressed up. Like yeah. there's a dressed up quality about it. Uh, just going out to a very formal event or something smelling really, really expensive because it smells very, very expensive to me. And it that's does. why I put it at number two. And I have Austere at number one. We're doing that. <laughs> we're doing that. We're doing that again. That thing again. Exactly. <laughs> my, my number two, um, which we're doing again, is Gladiator Oud. Um, like Sebastian said, Julian Rascone's DNA is definitely on it. And taken with the trend of Electimus with some of their fragrances, it does go in that drier direction. And I thought it was a gorgeous take on an oud scent. And it definitely does have that power, that sillage that will just cocoon you in a, in a scent bubble, if you will. And it's, uh, it's we a, love scent bubbles. We do love scent bubbles. It's a, it's a beautiful oud. It's a beautiful fragrance. Gladiator Oud's my number two. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And my number one is Persephone's Patchouli. I ranked it at number one in the previous video I did for Electimus. It's ranked at number one here again. I'm addicted to patchouli. Really love the smell. And again, as Joe was saying, it's not the chocolate cakey kind. It's greener, a bit floral, 
just a very unique take on patchouli that doesn't remind you of a lot of other patchoulis. Yeah. It might remind you of fragrances like Tempo or Vetiver patchouli from from the House of Montal, but uh, this is the version created uh, for Electimus London mm -hmm. by Christian Provenzano. He did a great job on this. It's really intense. It's very, very sexy. It is Persephone's patchouli. I don't know who Persephone is, but I like the patchouli that she has. I, I recognize that name. I believe it was a, a mythical... Greek mythology? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll look into that. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> Before he moves on with his number one... I can't wait to uh, watch the the movie Patchouli from the Underworld. If any if if anybody's got a link to it, <laughs> I'm I'm there. <laughs> Send Sebastian links to that, please. My number one is without much surprise Austere. I believe when we were reviewing this at the very beginning, Austere was one of those, and especially when I smelt the sample that Sebastian had given me a while back, it's one of those that really stood out to me, and. It smells expensive, like Sebastian was saying. It smells expensive, and it's creamy. I get a slight bit of a, a freshness to it. It's not necessarily creamy in that overly gourmand sense. And now that I smell it more, there is a slight tinge of leather to it. I do pick up on that. But like he was saying, like Sebastian was saying, there is like a, a suede buttery, leathery touch to it. But also some it's freshness. It's smooth. It's so smooth. It is... A delight to put your nose on but here it is once again mm -hmm. austere imperium black caviar yeah um uh what is it vixair vixair and mercurial cashmere didn't think twice about them when i sampled them from the samples yeah sometimes sampling fragrances from samples just doesn't do it for me i think you have to spray it from the bottle with its own force and sprays yeah to actually really do something for you so i don't yeah. know if you guys have the same experience i don't buy samples because samples for me just don't work mm -hmm. you don't get the same experience as that as you would get from spraying from the bottle i agree with that but anyway so those are our thoughts on the fragrances of electimus london what are your thoughts do you have a favorite let us know put a comment down yes if you guys are in the market for any electimus london fragrances don't forget to check them out over at zgo perfumery i have links to every single fragrance in the info box you can go check them out there's a 15 percent off discount code as well either way let's do this again let's do it again all right it has been a delight, y'all. <laughs> Guys, if you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Have a good one. In order to participate in the giveaway, please add a comment below and let us know what you liked about the video. Also, what you liked about the fragrances, and let us know which fragrance you would love to win if you were the lucky winner of the giveaway. Again, this is a USA giveaway. I'm sorry we can't offer it to the entire world because this is sponsored by the distributor of Electimus London here in the USA. So please put that information down and also please put down your state where you're commenting from. And of course, if you have a USA address and you're from outside of the world, you can always participate as well. Good luck with the giveaway and thanks so much for watching. See you guys later. Bye.